what's going on, everybody? I'm Izzy. And I'm Fitty. This is our guest, Michael Dutch, over. But where were you Friday? On, on Friday? Yeah, Friday night. This last Friday? Yeah. What's the date today? I don't know, but where were you Friday? On Friday, I was watching Michael Dutch over. That's right. The main eventer over here. This guy was That's tearing right. it up, dude. I heard. <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't go. Uh, um, you I, can't be here then. Yeah, <laughs> for real. <laughs> for real. Get him I, 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 but I did watch on live. Yeah, cool. So, uh, yeah, I, I did see That's all That's all that matters, as long as you've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, man. Michael Dutchover, pro boxer. Yeah. You're not even 21. Nope. Soon. Baby. Soon. A couple months? It's coming yeah. up. So yeah. Vegas, get ready for me. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so you're from Midland, Texas? Midland, Texas. Born and raised in Midland, Texas. Right on. Yep. Big ass Texas. It's Making a Texas. name for Mid for Midland, Texas. Are you do you fight out of Midland? Like do when they announce that fighting out of where Yeah, they announce um fighting out of uh Midland, Texas by way of Santa Fe Springs. Oh, okay. Because so, yeah, right I, I still represent uh where, That's where, your where I'm living at. now, yeah. Right on. So, but I'm always representing Midland. Yeah, hell Midland. yeah. Israel doesn't watch too much sports, mm -hmm. so we're gonna have to like bring him on to yeah. his slow oh, baby steps. Little little. Now that he baby just said steps. that, I've heard that before another yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'd be like, uh, well, I'm not a fighter, but you're West Covina, West Covina, West Covina, West Covina. Yeah, well, you know, West... if I move to Texas, oh, you right, know what right, I mean. Right. If you move to Texas, right? <laughs> Watch. <laughs> Watch right now when when I was asking where my brother moved to, and I still don't remember, but I'm yeah. gonna remember like halfway through the show, and then I'm just gonna blurt it out. That's so fine. if that happens, that's because I just remembered. Yeah, <laughs> it will make it like a word of the day. Word of the day. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no we won't do that. But Michael. Uh, you said you're what fighting out of Santa Fe Springs? Santa Fe Springs, California. Yes. What? Uh, I know Dan Zamora. Dan Danny Zamora, Danny Zamora is my is coach and coach. manager. Yes. All right. And I live with uh at his mom's house, Hilda Zamora, and I live with uh also uh Javi Zamora and Joey Joe Zamora. Yeah. Those are you know they're my family. Yeah. My family. Yeah. So we had um. Right here, you're, you're representing I I the iconic, iconic boxing. Yes. We had Anthony Garcia on the show. Yeah. Uh, couple episodes ago right yeah yeah two or three episodes ago mm -hmm. and he did mention that he had you as it or he you know he was a full sponsor for you yeah right so he kind of explained to us how that works yeah um pretty much you represent everything iconic is that kind of boxing yes sir yeah. yes All sir right, cool so he uh you know he always keeps me fresh with that new gear iconic gear and you know i rep for him he reps for me and he's He's been he's been with me from since the beginning, yeah. And so like we both help each other and great guy, great guy Anthony. That we we've known each other. He, he's seen me. I would love, uh, you know, just how things happen to grow. Like we're growing together. Yeah. And he's been with me from the start, and so I want to keep him till you know, or till you know, I'm becoming world champion, and after that, you know, so the, yeah, the relationship's real strong between me and him. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's a good foundation that yeah. you guys kind of started, you know, yeah, from exactly. definitely, exactly, yes, sir. Um, so he is—he's not the only sponsor, no. right? That's not how. No, he's you, not my you only could sponsor, have like but he. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, like my last um, fight. You know, each fight, each fight is different, but you know, fortunately, I've been blessed enough to have iconic. You know, he's sponsored me for my past like half of my fights. You know, like uh, my last fight course iconic was still my sponsor and i've also had a, a couple of new sponsors from my hometown midland uh it's boulevard nights and um you know i'm always uh everlast is my sponsor uh snack supplements i, I have many sponsors but you know um the guys that want to be advertised on my trunks you know so um those, those are my fight sponsors and so it, it varies from different fights and you know, I'm fortunate enough to have great sponsors from back home here, and Iconic's been very loyal to me. So, very cool. How long have you been boxing for? I've been boxing since a Nino, man. I was about the Nino hit eight. you guys too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, eight years old. Eight years old. I had my first fight um, when I was nine years old, I believe. My first amateur fight when I was nine years old, and my amateur career, I had over. Like 150, 150 bouts Damn. as an amateur. Wow. Um, is that average for someone that got started since they were nine years old? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah like around, you know, I stayed very busy as an amateur. Um, I grew up, um, it's funny how I started because um, I was the first uh, football player because 
Kyle was saying, you know, I'm a big Cowboys fan. I grew up watching the Cowboys. Yeah. So I want to be a football player growing up as, as a kid, you know. Every kid has a dream. And so my first dream was, you know, I want to be a, a, a football player in the NFL. And I was good. And I was good, man. I, I was for my teams, you know, I played for the GMFLs, the Greater Middle Football League, you know, flag football as a kid growing up. And I was very good. I was very talented. I was uh, and most of my teams, I was like the running back. Um, whenever there was a pass play, they'd put me in a quarterback. Whenever there was, uh, uh, when we had a good quarterback, they'd put me in a receiver to go catch the ball. In defense, I was like running safety. I was like pretty much like all over the field. You're like a utility man. Yeah, or... like you know, I was just very athletic. And but um, I think it was at the end of my fourth grade year, my fourth grade year, because of as you know, um, football has an off season. You know, so right, right. there's always a break and. They're my fourth grade year, or it was my third grade, my third grade year. Um, we we finished the season that the team I was on. We actually we had a one. It was the Super Bowl at that time. You know, it was we were the, like a third grade champs, and yeah. and so we finished the season, got into off season. I wanted to stay in shape, you know, stay. So, and my oldest brother was boxing at the time, so I was like, uh, I'm gonna go to the gym and try boxing, and. As a kid, you know, I, I, I was just watching my brother. I watched my oldest brother, Junior Dutch, over box. And I seen him, and it was, like, motivation to me. And at, at first, I was taking it as a joke. I, I would just go, you know, shadow box. And uh, at that same gym, they had a pool table. And so I would, like, shadow box for a little bit yeah. and then go play pool yeah. for, like, a couple of weeks. But then, then I started getting into it. I was like, man, I started shadow boxing. And I started working in mids, hitting the bags. Yeah. And it became, you know, I started developing, you know, a liking to it. And once I had my first fight, um, they said, hey, I, I've been training for a couple of weeks. Like, let's go have your first fight. Yeah. I had my first fight and I was nine years old or eight years old. One of those. I was like, I was like 60 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I got in the ring and I won. And I just love the feeling that, like, I got from the crowd. And I still remember, you know, my mom, my dad, everybody, yeah. everybody cheering. It's a different feeling than football. You know, football is a whole team sport. Yeah. Boxing is like you win and everybody comes to you, you know. And, right, it's an individual yeah, sport. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an individual sport. One-on-one. On one. It really is. At the end of the day, you're in the ring fighting against the, your opponent. Yeah. You either win or you lose. And yeah. that was it. And so You're the offense and the defense. Yep. And yeah. so I won, like, my first uh, eight amateur fights. and. After that, like, um, then when I had my first loss as an amateur, um, when I lost, um, I got like a like a burning desire. I was like, man, I'm about, I'm about, I'm going back to the gym, and training harder to yeah. beat that same kid, yeah. and and win again, get back to my winning ways, and like I would, like most of my amateur losses, like I had avenged that loss. And oh, okay, cool. So that's a oh, cool yeah. thing about amateurs, and. But so I just developed a passion for boxing from from a kid, and then like I s started staying away from football. Was like, and the only thing I did after after that was like track and cross country because I love running, and that would help with my conditioning. Yeah. Uh, as me growing up as like a teenager through school, and so that's all I did was boxing and then cross country and track. Um, once I got into junior high and high school, and that was it. it took off, and you know I love the sport now. It's what I do. That's and, it. Yep. It was just your your um, you and your brother that boxed, or yes, my my older brother boxed, and then uh, I I took it to like another one. Um, at a certain point in time, my oldest brother, uh, he had to stop boxing just from he had to just stop boxing. That's and, uh, junior. But, yeah, junior. But he was he was also he helped train me also because mm -hmm. whenever he was older, he seen like my talent. And he would push me. He would push me to. He he would push me as an amateur. He would, he was that that guy. Uh, knowing whenever I'd slack off, um, and they said I'll give all credit to him for you know my amateur pedigree. How far down the line does it go as far as boxing? Is it, was it did it start with your brother or did your dad maybe do some amateur boxing or grandpa? Um, no, it actually started with my brother. It yeah. just started with my brother. Um, I saw my brother and. Uh, you know, I want to be like big bro. Yeah, so, yeah. and uh, when I got in the gym, I got a, a deep passion for it and never stopped since then. And, you know, um, 
uh, I had I had a great amateur coaches too. My my amateur coach was Frank Lujan, and they're still in Midland, and a lot of Lujan, and they're in Midland also. And that's I'm also returning um, in a couple of weeks back to Midland to support an an amateur show, an amateur show there. Cool. So every time I go back, the kids love like watching me because there's still little pictures of me, you know, yeah. in the gym and as as a kid. And now that I'm a professional, they look up to me, and it's a it's a crazy crazy feeling you know yeah, so cool the boy from midland coming up representing yeah, man, yeah. Man, it's a crazy feeling because you know i'm 20 years old you know i never thought of that uh yeah. you know the kids would be looking up looking up to me like this but now i'm uh i'm gaining the knowledge and like i don't i know where uh i know where i'm at and you know i need to keep being a good role model for the kids now because yeah. of the position that i am in so i'm gonna keep doing that yeah you know that's actually that sounds very um encouraging you know yeah, to yeah. hear that that someone at, at his age you know 20 years old and he's already thinking that he's a you know or knows he, that he's a role model mm -hmm. yeah and that these little kids they do look up to him yeah you know that means when you go to vegas you got to go a little easy on yeah, the Vegas trip. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but no i mean but it is cool though right you know he's acknowledging that that yeah. he's a role model yeah, and he can't be doing any any silly stuff yeah, like some exactly. some professional boxers. Oh. Like, Dude, we got to put it out there. I'm oh, sorry. It's, it's, yeah, I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> up. I'm sorry, but it's coming up. This is recorded. See what you did? <laughs> <laughs> this is being recorded. What's the date today? You guys got the date in there. Today's date. Se the 20th. September 25th. September 25th. It just dropped. <laughs> just dropped. Victor just dropped Ortiz. Today, September 25th. Arrested for rape. Yep. Three. Is that yeah. allegedly, or is it? Forced, it just says forced, forced, forced rape. rape. And he's got a fight with in just a few days on Sunday with John Molina Jr. John Molina Jr. Obviously, them over there are going to listen to this on Tuesday, yeah. following the fight. Mm -hmm. If there is a fight, right? If there, I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty he, sure he'll make that bail. None. And as a professional <laughs> boxer, how does that make you feel? The the think knowing that you have you know someone with the career that Victor Ortiz has had. I mean, he's considered a veteran in, of the sport, yeah. right? Yeah. The career that he's had in boxing, the career that he's had outside of boxing in acting, mm -hmm. and whatever else. I, I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's done a rap al album or anything like that because sure. everybody seems to want to be doing a rap album Browner. nowadays. Browner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it, how does that make you feel as a boxer, though? To to know. I mean, I'm sure you've looked up to him at one point in time. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, so. So when he fought Mayweather, when he uh, a couple of his old fights, and you know, just um, what happened today is <laughs> very unfortunate, you know, and to uh, that's something that I said like, I don't want it. I don't want to do, you know, as a yeah. as a as a professional. You have a lot of people looking at you. You you have to hold yourself to a high standard, be a role model to 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 kids, you know, because right. at the end of the day. I mean, that's what it's about. I mean, to me, it's like the future is going to keep going. Boxing is going to live forever. Yeah. And you got to think about the, the next generation. They're going to be coming up, you know, and you, you got to be got to be a good role, mo role model for the kids. You know, you shouldn't be seeing that stuff, especially on. Um, and even if it's not that you can can be, um, you know, getting caught up in. And like that party life, you know, if you you're a real professional, put yourself in a situation yeah, like that, right? If, if you're if you're a real professional, you should um, hold yourself accountable on the weekends, also too, you know. Yeah. And just keeping yourself keeping yourself at uh, at a you know as a professional. That's you know, that's yeah. all I can say. That that's, that's not professional, right? Of him. Now, of course, I think it's safe to say, or we should say, that it's alleged. At this point, I mean, because yeah. he's got, he's been arrested, but we don't know if it, if he's got, if he's actually guilty mm -hmm. of it, right? Because mm -hmm. that an accusation can happen anytime. I mean, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So especially nowadays, right? Uh, exactly. Everybody's just kind of throwing that finger around like nobody's business. Yeah. So you know, I'll tell see, you what, we like. I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt. Tell you what, though, it's gonna be on his. It's gonna be in his head on Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah that's for sure. That's yeah, for that, that's sure. a big thing because half of half of boxing is is mental. You know, yeah. mental. You, of course, you got to be physically ready, but you can be physically ready. Something happens the day before your fight. You know, um, could be anything. You know, a family, uh, a family occurrence. You know, something happens to your family right. or something. If if that's in your head when you're going in the ring, you're not a hundred percent. Right. And it's gonna show. Yeah. It's gonna show in the ring, and so 
you know that that'll definitely affect them right right now what goes on in what goes on in your mind like the night before i'm focused I'm just i'm dictating as soon as the bell rings dictating the fight from that first bell to the last bell that, that that's what i've thought about and that's all that's gone through my mind for these past fights and um i feel like when i'm 100 percent focused you know i can't be beat what do you i, I wanted to ask uh John, John, this, but what do you, what do you, um, what do you think about in the ring? Like, what, what are your thoughts as he's coming towards you, or you're not getting hit? Not getting, is that what you think? Yeah, yeah. Hit and I mean, not get hit. That's the that's the science. <laughs> but uh, you have to be able to adjust, you know, because your opponent's not gonna, your opponent's obviously he's not gonna be the same as the film that you study on him. You know, come fight night, you know, he's he might be doing things different. Y'all. It's good to always study and see the tendencies that your opponent does, but you know you you have to go in that ring knowing that uh, you're gonna dictate, you're gonna fight your fight, you're gonna fight your own fight, not his fight, not do what he wants to do, and just be able to adjust. If he changes something, you can change it too. You know that, and just be being able to adjust. That that's the one of the biggest parts about boxing. If you're one dimensional, you can find a way to be beat. If you're if you're not one dimensional. And I don't see myself as one dimensional at all. I can, I can mix. I can box you if I if I have to, I, if I need to go. If I need to come to you, I can come to you. You know, break your will, and you know, just different things. You you can't be one dimensional in this sport. You know, um, your your record right now is what twelve and zero. Eleven and eleven and zero. Eleven and zero. This last fight was eleven. Your eleventh one. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So eleven and zero. Um, at what point in your in your professional career did you start? the the whole aspect of studying film on your opponent. I mean, did you was this something that you're doing in your amateur career, or did you or did yeah. you just get really? That's how far yeah. down it goes. Uh, and especially in because in the amateur career, um, you you always have uh, brackets. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're you're fighting in tournaments. You fight. You win. You advance to the to the next bracket. You pretty much know who you're gonna be fighting. Yeah. And you'll see if there if there's film. Uh, I'd I'd always study my fighters, yeah. just to you know you can find any tendency, any tendency that they do like every time you know they have this habit or something. And that's just like little thing to look for. And even as a pro, uh, if they have film, you know of course I'm, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna study it for a little bit. It's just like just like um, school. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're preparing for a test. You you're gonna to want to study. If you right. don't study, you're not prepared. Right. You know you just want to be pre pre prepared forever. I mean that comes with sparring too. That's why we have so much different sparring. We're always seeing different styles. So if there's an opponent that you can't find film on, I mean you're still gonna be ready because yeah. you know I, I've I, I've seen pretty much every style there is to to face just because my amateur pedigree, my sparring here in Southern California, just everything. So. I don't think there will be anything that I haven't seen yeah. when I step in the ring come fight night. Yeah. You know, um, when I saw you in that ring, man, you look, I mean, like a, I mean, you're a pro, but you look like a natural, natural. I mean, the way you move your foot, your, the, your foot movement, everything is just, it's just crisp, dude, the way he looks, you know, not like, I mean, you don't want to type better about any boxer because I put me in that ring, I'll get my ass kicked every single day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I got a boxing door, a bag over there, but that's just for looks. That's for the, <laughs> for, for the guests. That's for the background. Uh, <laughs> that's the for podcast. the background for the podcast. <laughs> but um, but no, yeah, you just, I mean, you looked real crisp. You know, your opponents, they just, like the guy you were fighting, you know, he was just some type, at some point just wailing, mm -hmm. not wanting to get hit, was clinching a lot, you know, like just... Mm. And this guy, you know, separation knows how to, you know, keep his distance. The jab, everything just looks natural. You know, does that come from the 150 fights, or I mean, no, that and is that come, your... comes from my training. And if you if you look at honestly, if you look at my my pro debut to now, I'm a different fighter, and that's I'm a different fighter from back then. That's um, me being more calm, more relaxed, being a professional. Honestly, like because uh, you can tell when. Somebody goes in the ring and they're tense, you know, and, mm -hmm. they, and you swing everything. You want to knock you out. You're gonna be gassed by the second, third round. I could tell whenever my my fighters, you know, if he's not as relaxed as me, I know I'm gonna get him. Yeah. And because uh, I know his move, you can tell when they're tensing up. There, you can see their punches when you're relaxed and just like 
letting your hands go. And that's, you know, we practice on form, technique, and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, me and my coaches, you know, we work hard in the gym. And we work on um, every aspect of of my abilities. And so we put it together, and it, and it shows on fight night. Yeah. Are you, so you are you a full time boxer? Like you don't yes. have any other uh, job? That's it. No. There's um, some. There's still some boxers out there that have those two yeah, two no. jobs right now. Yeah, right? that's hard. <laughs> but and, yes, I'm fully dedicated all of my time. I you know sacrifice and dedication. I I put it all into boxing. Yeah, you could definitely show. It shows that how much the hard work that he does in the gym. You know, it shows in your fight yes, for sure. Thank you. Hundred percent. How how many uh, weeks or months? I had do you start training for like this last fight you just had? Okay, I had just fought, you know, um, this week, you know, we're taking it lightly, um, just, you know, just staying in shape, but uh, we'll fully start camping about uh, in a week or two, and we'll just start camp again for my next fight, a good uh, like five to six weeks, five to six weeks of sparring, strength and conditioning, road work, and everything, and uh, my next fight um, should be in November, in the middle of November. That's the last fight of the year for you? It should, uh, yes, sir. I'll be looking to close out the year strong. Is that a total nice. of four or five uh, fights? It would be my fifth. Fifth fight. Fifth fight. Damn. This year? Yeah. Dang. That's way more than your uh, Mayweather and Canelo are fighting twice a year now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I mean, it's a whole different, uh, you know. Yep jump from uh fighters but I'm, I'm like one fight every 10 years <laughs> <laughs> what is uh what goes so are you undefeated though <laughs> <laughs> anyway next question <laughs> take a look at the other guy <laughs> yeah, yeah. um you mentioned strength and conditioning you have uh i was there and i and i kind of met you know hey what's up shook his hand but that guy was really busy some guy jerry, named jerry jerry arias yeah, jerry strength arias. And conditioning coach yeah uh, Strength and conditioning. Yes, sir. How big is that? I mean, is that something new in boxing right now? Because it, it seems like back back in the day, <coughs> your manager, your coach, your mm -hmm. trainer, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. trainer was your strength and conditioning coach. Mm -hmm. And it seems like now everybody's kind of going the diff different route as mm -hmm. far as they're getting a, their own coach for strength and conditioning mm -hmm. aside from the trainer. Yeah. So is, is that something different? That's something new kind of that you've been seeing I or have you had that for a while? I, I feel like, well, I, I've done it um, ever since I turned pro. Mm -hmm. but. We've had a strength and condition. We've been working with uh, Coach Jerry at Titan Edge Athletics, and uh, I feel like having that strength and condition coach, it you know puts focus on just that. So when I'm at the boxing gym, I don't have to worry about strength and condi about conditioning. You know, doing you know jump roping and uh, different stuff. That at the boxing gym, we're working on strictly boxing. Mm -hmm. We're working on technique, boxing form, throwing punches, defense, offense, head movement. We're focused on boxing. We don't have to focus on conditioning, you know, running, doing that, because that, that takes time from well, well, from the main priority. Our main priority is boxing. In the boxing right. gym, we're doing boxing. So we separate that, and it takes, and it gives more time to strength and conditioning. We're, we're, we're still taking care of that, and we're putting all our, all our focus on that, the time we work out. Then we have rest, rest time, and then I go to the boxing gym, and I'm focusing on my boxing training. That's my shadow boxing head movement, Mitch with my coach, bag work. It's just strictly boxing. Right. We don't have to take time away to, you know, go do a 30 minute run to yeah. keep my conditioning, push ups. Uh, you know, that's in the boxing gym, boxing, strictly conditioning. We're doing everything conditioning, running. Uh, it separates that. All your, all your meal plans is yeah. all that? Yeah. Uh, yes, same sir. Thing? Yes, sir. So I feel like, yeah, this. This way it works great, and it showed I'm always in uh, top condition for my fights, and uh, my technique is good, and form is good, and that's in the boxing gym, and, you know, it shows. Yeah. It, we have a, a, a good, a great team. I have a great team behind me, my strength and conditioning coach, Coach Danny, and also I have another coach, Javier Javier Gomez. He's mm -hmm. my other assistant coach to, to Danny, and, you know, we have a great team. Nice. You you wake up in the morning and just till the sun goes down and you're training or pretty much really <laughs> <laughs> well uh, the the days are different okay um during camp okay I'm gonna give you a week of camp life whenever I'm in camp uh Mondays Mondays okay Monday we're sparring so I wake up I eat breakfast we're sparring at 
10, around 10 a.m. I'll spar. Boom, we do our sparring session. Well, I'll get back home around 12 or 1. I'll eat a little bit, uh, rest, and then I'll head to, uh, I'll do my conditioning. So I'll head to the track. Well, sometimes we'll do track, sometimes we'll do a long run. I'll do, and that takes about like an hour. And we'll do that, and then after that, we'll do um, ab work, core work, and, you know, just stretch out. And that's a, that's usually how Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are. Tuesdays, I'll uh, get up at 5, I'll run, I'll do my running, and then strength and conditioning at 9 a.m. till 10, 10, 30, 11. And then I'll come home, eat, rest a little bit, and then head to the gym at 2. And then our boxing workouts, I'll get out the gym probably like at 5. I'll eat dinner and then go to sleep. And that's what I'm saying. I'll go I, After that, like, I go to sleep pretty early, like around sometimes I'm going to sleep at like 7.30. <laughs> and uh, I'm just so used to that schedule. And those are and that's my day, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Saturdays, I'll get up and run. And then uh, a, stre- a hard strength and conditioning session at around 11 o'clock. And then that's it. I'll rest. I'll rest for the rest of the Saturday, Sunday, um, go to church and rest. And just get ready to do it all again. <laughs> so that's yeah. a whole week. It's a, it's a law, dude. Do you? <laughs> it's gonna sound dumb, but do you have time for like leisure, fun stuff? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I do. Like on the weekends, like on Saturdays, because I only have one. Uh, one for the strength and conditioning workout. But my body's tired. Yeah. I, I yeah. want to rest. That's the recovery day. Yeah, I want to rest. And even Sundays, you know, I'll go. I'll still do like a light run on Sundays. And but you know I have all Sunday to go out every during camp probably like two two or three times like I'll I'll go to the beach like and just to like relax get my mind off boxing you know because yeah. just all week and stuff and but other than that you know I just want to chill out at the house play Madden and <laughs> just chill <laughs> yeah, yeah some of that Fortnite these kids are playing nowadays. I still haven't I haven't touched yeah, Fortnite. I hear good. about Don't it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no girlfriend? No, no. I'm it's boxing. All my exes boxing live in Texas. Girlfriend. All my exes live <laughs> <laughs> in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so when you do go back to uh, to Texas, I'm sure you stay. You try to stay fit. You work out. Do oh, your yeah. thing. Yeah. But what what's it like over at, at, at when you go back home at Texas? Oh man, uh, I love it. Every time I go back, uh, I feel like my my following gets a little bigger, and you know, like um, when I honestly when I go back to Midland, sometimes I'll go to the mall, and you know, I see some random people that you know they want to take a picture with me. I'm like, I'm like, what you want to take a picture with me? I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, why? <laughs> like, oh, you're that boxer. Huh? I'm like, yeah. And then, so then I I have to like remind myself like like you know you're a professional. You know, like yeah, yeah. but a lot of people looking at you, so I have to kind of like. Um, hold yourself to a certain standard yeah you know what i'm saying because me like uh growing up it was you know just real you know kind of like quite a quiet humble kid you know i don't yeah. i don't i don't want to see people coming up to me to take pictures like like i'm famous or something like yeah. i don't know that, what that's like and, yeah. and so people i i just I always take pictures with people you know but and then after i'm like wow this is a surreal feeling like, yeah you know it's, it's like my dream i used to watch you know big people on tv one of my favorite fighters was miguel cotto and you know i just love watching that and seeing that happen to me now that people want to take pictures of, with me in my yeah. hometown yeah that's just a surreal feeling and you know and, you know i'm blessed blessed by the best that's pretty awesome that's really. good yeah that's good yeah what are your what are your what is your take or your thoughts on like um head injuries and stuff um to me, I mean, it, it's part of the game in boxing. You try to avoid it, you know, have a good defense, work on defense, yeah. you know. And that's one thing my coaches preaches me to a lot. You're like, you want to have, do you want to have a, a long career? And I was like, you can't go in there, uh, want to bang with everybody, you know. And, and that's part of the sweet science of boxing, hitting and not getting hit, and learning how to do so. And you know, we work on that a lot. Yeah, that's good. Yes, sir. You know, uh, sorry. No, go ahead. You know, you first. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. Rock paper scissors. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, 
so what what I was okay, I'm a casual boxing fan. I'm not crazy, okay. yeah. you know. But when I was bo- watching boxing uh, back with like Mayweather, De La Hoya, Chavez, you know, mm-hmm. and we're talking Chavez. We're, I'm dating myself, but uh, Mayweather, right? I mean, I was always like, "Come on, get in, get in there and fucking fight," you know. Like he's always holding and clinging on the clinch. But now that I've I'm, I'm watching a little bit more, and I'm, I'm actually like trying to become nah, I'm trying to become a student of of boxing, right? Mm-hmm. I want to learn it, right? Yeah. Um, not so much learn it like in in here, but learn it here. Yeah. And uh. <laughs> It's too old for that. Um, Mayweather was smart. Very He's smart, smart, dude. I mean, he, like you just said it right now, don't get hit. Not book smart. He knows how to read. Okay. That's all bullshit. <laughs> he knows how to read. But he, he was, uh, he was smart, dude. I mean, he didn't get hit. Yeah. You know, he, he, yeah, he ran away. No, people he, call he him ducked. what they want to call him, but yeah, no, he's, he, he's a smart fighter, yeah. you know, as opposed to like the guys that were just sticking their head yeah, off. Because of most head. of the people that he was fighting, they're trying to knock his head off, you know? Yeah. They're getting tired doing mm-hmm. that because yep. wearing themselves out. All the, all the swings and misses, and yeah, and that's what he would do. He'd wait for you to get tired, and then take pick your shots, pick yeah. your shots, and that's how that's how he would win his fights. Of course, it's not the most entertaining at some point, you know, not the most entertaining fighter, but he he did it the right way. Yeah, then uh, he still made millions and millions, though. Yep. So. How are you gonna beat that? Entertainer yeah. or not, you're still he's still making yep. money and people are still watching. People are st- they're yeah. still gonna pay. They're yeah. still gonna pay to watch all of his fights because they want to see him lose. They're still gonna pay to watch Pacquiao uh, Mayweather Part Two. Yep. You know exactly. what I mean? Oh, he's yeah. coming back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I saw I saw um, Mayweather. Yeah. In Hollywood. Yeah. He was, we were in the elevator together, yeah. and uh, I was like, I could take this guy. Oh shit! <laughs> I looked down on him. And then yeah, I was like, yeah. Nah. Good luck. Nah, Mayweather's gonna do the same thing. You know, he's gonna. Hey, what, what do you what What do you think all this uh this comeback stuff is? Money. It's he's money. Just, uh, and, you know, uh, Liddell and uh, Ortiz. Money. Is that what it is? Money. The MMA, UFC, right? Or yeah, and, it's gonna and, be and Pacquiao, all that. It's, it's money. 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 It's gotta be money. Or they're bored. Nah, because you could you you'll get you'll do something else. Mayweather has he's got so many. I mean, he's got a strip club. You don't get bored if you have if you own a strip club. <laughs> so you've been boxing since you were eight or nine. You said. Yeah. What age do you think you'll stop? Whenever my heart, whenever my it's not in my heart anymore. It's still in my heart. I have a don't you think though? So. Cause you're gonna be 21, dude. Mm-hmm. That's a that's already a long time. Don't you think that like after that, where where else is your mind gonna go? Like, do, was it, don't you think you're always gonna want to box or just? But here, look at we just had. Uh, there's a documentary that just came out, Thirty for Thirty, ESPN's Thirty for Thirty. All right, Junior those are, Sale. Those are good. Yeah, Junior Sale. Now here, this is a problem right now with athletes where they're so focused and so dedicated to that one sport. Mm-hmm. And they forget to find that uh, that other passion project after they retire, mm-hmm. and that's when you get the depression kicks in. Mm. Okay, because they so know no other way. They know nothing yeah. else. That's all they. That's all they did. That's all you know. Yeah, a lot of it is the head injuries, of course. I mean, with Junior Cell, that's already you know it's medically proven that his head was messed up. But mm. there's a lot of other athletes, or like just for example, boxers. You have to find another passion, another gig, mm-hmm. so to speak. Right, mm-hmm. if you're gonna get into commentary, if you're gonna okay. get it, you know, no business, no, no of a fallback plan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have to yeah. have a plan, which I was that was my lead up question to you is I already is have there, one. Yeah, dude, this guy's yeah. smart, dude. I'm telling you, he's not like a regular twenty year old. That's crazy, right? Yeah, I, was, I was just gonna say, <laughs> what's your plan? I because I have a passion for uh, being a physical trainer and nutritionist also. So yeah. I already know, like after my boxing career. That's how I'm, I'm gonna be a personal trainer, help mm-hmm. people uh, reach the goals that they want to do, and uh, nutritionist also, you know, and just, still be in the same field. Yeah, I'm still in the same field. I'm still in That's the fitness good. field. You know, something that I like to do, and you know, I can have, make a career out of. Because I've already started helping people, like you know, just just to help people in back home because um, they want to be like live the life of a professional boxer. What does he do? What's his diet like and stuff like that. And, you know, I like I love helping people. And yeah. So th- that, that, that be, that's what I would do if I was unboxing. And I already know that. So There you go, man. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever gone through a period of, uh, I'm not going to say depression, or just like, uh, what am I trying to get across? Like Doubt? Yeah, like doubt. Doubt. Um, 
of, of my boxing. Yeah, uh, just nope. <laughs> That's good. I never have. I no room for you. Know, never doubt of myself. You know, I know um, how hard I train. Um, everything I put my body through, and you know, the, the hard work to me, hard uh, hard work pays off, and you know, and it, and it, and it shows. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say to somebody who's that eight or nine year old kid? Maybe those kids that you go back home and they look up to you. You know, they want to be you. Maybe don't give up when you lose, because I've seen uh, so many people that you know. They take that first loss and they 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 don't want to do it no more. And you know, there's that's my I had over uh, let me say like fifteen fifteen to twenty losses in my amateur career. And you know, every single time, uh, you know, I I hate losing. I hate losing. I'm and so that's what I would um, tell a kid. You know, if they lose, you know, don't give up. Get back. Work harder, work harder than you did, so you don't lose the next one. So that's one thing I would say. That's good. Yeah. Don't don't give up when you lose. Right. No. Yeah. Not just don't give up. Losing is is also one of the greatest uh, learning experiences. Oh, yeah. and, you know, don't uh, like okay, you lost. Don't take it as a loss. or take it as a, a learning experience. You know, in even your wins. Like when I win. I, I like my last performance. I gave myself like like a B minus, and I'm going over seeing it because I know what I can do when I fight like a perfect fight. I you know I, I saw mistakes in my last fight. You know some people may not that are watching casual fans, but I see I see all the mistakes and I say that wasn't a perfect fight. So I'm gonna go back in the gym and work on those mistakes that I made. So um, especially you know as a kid as an amateur, if you lose, just take it as learning experience. Get back in the gym, work harder than you did before. Don't let it happen again. You know they say that uh, that you're you no. Know, typically, you're the, you're your own hardest qu- critic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. That person in the mirror. Yeah, and like your fight. I mean, like you said, casual fan. Hey, he did great. <laughs> but like he's, you know, I, like I honestly, I don't think you'll ever have a perfect fight. You yeah. yourself, because I'm it's not, not in your it mentality. <laughs> yeah. It's not your. It's exactly. not here. You're never gonna have that perfect fight. You're gonna retire and, and say and think to yourself, "I never had that perfect fight." Yeah. Even though you know whatever three, four, five, six time champion, world champion, right? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. But you'll never have it, and that's just the mentality, and that's how you're designed. It's just um, not this past fight, uh, but my last one that I had the second round KO. It was like one of the quickest fights, highlight KO, and you know, and I said I was like, uh, I can do better. Yeah. You know, and people are like, "What?" <laughs> I was, I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I I can go over. I have like over ten mistakes, ten mistakes that I made that fight. Yeah. You know, so I go back to gym, so it doesn't happen again. Yeah, yeah that's a good mindset to yeah. have. It is. Yeah, it's strong. When is your When is your next one? You said November. Is November. That, uh, here in LA. It's uh, in Ontario, 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 California. Yes, sir. You gotta make it out there, man. Yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. Gotta make it out there. <laughs> you know, sure. um. Right now you're fighting under Thompson Thompson Boxing. Thompson Boxing Promotions, and I'm also signed with Banner Promotions. What is it? Banner Promotions. Banner. Yeah. Is that? It, it's is a that... Co- They're out of. Uh, it's out of uh, Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Uh, Artie Palulo. Yeah. All right. It's a different. How does that work? Do you ever get to fight out there? Yeah, I fought um, actually two times on the East Coast. I fought in uh, Washington and and uh, up, upstate New York. Yeah. So I fought. It was cool fighting over there on the on the East Coast. Actually, um, I fought in the MGM National Harbor and some other uh, big old hotel in Washington, D.C. It, yeah. it, it was a cool experience. Yeah. was Is that also streaming on Facebook or is it just? Uh, they will always be streamed on the Thompson Boxing page. Yeah. So, yeah. So what do you think about that? Your own personal opinion with the with the streaming as opposed to like pay-per-views and. Oh, you know, there's, I mean, there's levels like I know within this next year, uh, in 2019, I'm pretty sure I'll be on a televised card. So, um, and I know Thompson's doing great with their with their live stream. It's, it's gotten better and better every every month, and you can tell from, you know, my last year to this year, the the views are up. You know, and it look, it looks just like it's a prof- it's a professional site. You know, I love the the Thompson stream. 
you know that's and that's the world that we live in nowadays is social media yeah you know so and they're taking uh that accountable and they're, they're they're making it big you know everybody's of course everybody's on facebook and so take it to the facebook live stream everybody sees it i mean everybody has a smart great. tv now yeah you could just download you that can, facebook you app can hook it up to the tv you can hook up there. your phone easy and it's for free or download it's, the app and it's for phone. free you know you can be free <laughs> it seems like that's the direction that that uh the way that we view entertainment because now i mean before Right now, it's like on demand. You you're watching all your shows, mm. your movies on on demand and streaming, or not so much streaming, mm-hmm. but on demand. I mean, the future, right? I think, is going to be sp- sports, live streaming sports. Mm. Yep, and that's yep. where it's going to be on I mean, the internet. Or, yeah, or I mean, you can do it already with a lot of it up. Yeah. yeah, a lot of stuff. But I mean, I think that's where they're really going to push it. That ESPN Plus app. Thing. Right. Even right. though they had their little hiccups. They've had their hiccups already, but you can tell it's going in that direction to yeah. all social media. Like, it's crazy. Yep. Damn. I could be a boxer. No, why not? I don't know. I just it's a lot of work, man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's no, but you know what? It's like you said, right? How much of it is mental? It's 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 probably it's you said half, but it's yeah, it's gotta be more than more, half. Yeah. It's gotta be more than half. Yep. Because you know exactly. you can you can train all you want, but if it's not here, right, yeah. you're not gonna perform right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Most of the guys that you're fighting are probably training as much or mm. close to what you're mm-hmm. training. Like, yeah, it's well, the my mindset is on a different level. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I'm I'm going in the ring. I'm not coming out unless I have a W. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you could tell it's you could tell it's, it's a different way of thinking for you just by the way you talk. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, so. like. Well, well, so what's the future for Mike? Uh, November, November, we're going for twelve and zero, nine KOs. Do you have an opponent already? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't have an opponent, but you know, I better be ready. Are you gonna be fighting at the double tree? Uh, yeah, double tree, right. double tree. So that'll hotel. close out your year with twelve. Yep. Nice. And so it'll yeah. be nice. in October. October will be my two years as a professional. So. Uh, November be uh two years and one month. So, yeah. so two years, twelve fights, and that's pretty good. I think that's good. <laughs> nice, right on. Well, I want to thank you very much for for uh, spending the the time with us. Spending the night. the time with us. I know you're. <laughs> hey, you can crush her. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, need get, you need to get to bed. Yeah. Um. Let me see what time. Is it? All right, we're about an hour past my bedtime. Oh, past. <laughs> Dang. Uh, it's all good. Um. Yeah, dude. Thanks for giving us your time. For sure. Well, thank y'all. Thank good y'all for on, having good me. Good luck on your endeavors, dude. I'm definitely gonna make out make it out to the next one. Got you to. Go. You I, have to. I missed this last one and I was bummed out, but um, you know what? That was my f- the first time I ever went to go watch a boxing event. Yeah, I never was gonna been. ask you too. I yeah, was like, never, I, that's why I don't know if you saw my face the whole time. I was just like, it's different live, dude. It was especially insane, live dude. hearing the punches. Kind yeah, of, everything, dude. I mean, yeah. and because that that was a good card too. Yeah, it has. A, oh, there Thompson, wasn't any. any Thompson fights. always has oh, no? No, no. great fights. Great fights. I, I'm telling you, it was like if I, as if I was. No, you know what? They had there was better fights there than if I would have gone watch a pay per view. Huh. even though that See? that Canelo Triple yeah, G, yeah. Oh, that yeah. was a pretty good card. Yeah, but then yeah, you know. the undercard though. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, these were good fights. Dude. Yeah, they were Great all good fights. fights. It's, it's intense, huh? It is intense. I used to do a uh, uh, ringside photography for oh, okay. for some events and stuff. Yeah, so. it's it's yeah. different, dude. It the whole experience, everything was cool. Yep. You know, I, I even went backstage or to the locker, not backstage. <laughs> I went to the locker room, and uh, and that's where I saw Michael over there, and he's in his zone. And I was in like, zone. I was like, well, hey, what's up, man? And he came up, he said hi, and I was trying to talk to him, and he was just like, oh, don't oh, talk yeah. to me, dude. I'm in the zone. <laughs> and I saw, I was like, oh shit, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. pretty. It was pretty cool, man. It was pretty right cool. On. Yeah, I look forward. To, uh, I got. We got to do it again. Yeah, yeah, for got sure. To. I'm gonna got do that to. for sure. Got to see me go for number twelve. Yeah, yeah hell 12. yeah. We'll do um, it. Yeah. yeah. But thanks. Thanks again. Thank y'all. I'm close Thank us y'all. out. Yeah, man. Uh, everybody, uh, check us out. How We Talk Podcast on the social medias, all of them, you know, uh, <laughs> Twitters. Number 22. Check down. Uh, uh, number the, 22. The, the Facebook. Yeah, he's going to be number 22. And the Instagram. What the else? Instagrams. The YouTube. Twitter. Oh, you said Twitter? The Twitters. Even though we don't tweet. The tweets. We got them all, man. We post them all there. You guys check them out. If all you don't know, don't, you know. Thanks for uh, Start following us. Thanks for the support. See you later, guys. Adios.